tools that you're going to need for this lesson are Visual Studio Code. I've got my browser window opened on the right hand side and then I've got the editor which is Visual Studio Code opened on the left hand side. So we can see the changes that are going to be taking place as we update the files and we run the files. So I've downloaded Visual Studio Code and the reason that I'm using Visual Studio Code is that we're going to be accessing the terminal directly within the editor. So if you are using a different editor, then you also might need a terminal depending on the editor that you're using. So Visual Studio Code does come with a terminal and it's free open source. So you can select the editor that you want to use and then go over to github.com because we are creating GitHub pages and you will need a GitHub account in order to create a GitHub page. So GitHub pages are free as well. So once you've set up your GitHub account, you can go ahead and log into the GitHub account. And from here, we're gonna just go ahead and we're gonna create a brand new repository. So under the repositories tab, so once you've logged into your account, you can select to create a new GitHub repository. So this is the repository that we're gonna be using for my Git page. So I'm gonna call it My Pages. And then you can enter in a description. There's also whether it's public or private. And because it's gonna be a GitHub page, we're just gonna leave it public. Uh, I can add in a readme file. So this is just a file that's gonna be an information file. By default, it's gonna be added to the master branch, which is the default branch. And then once we've gone through all of this, we can go ahead and we can create the repository. So once again, I've logged into my GitHub account and I've created my repository. So what we wanna do is we wanna clone this repository over to our local drive so we can make some updates. We can add in some new files. So now go ahead and open up your Visual Studio code. So I'm gonna make this again smaller and we're gonna launch it and sit it to the right hand side of the editor. And then once you've got Visual Studio code or whatever editor that you're using, you can go ahead and create a new file. And I'm just gonna go ahead and create a text file. So there's also some options here where you can clone a repository, although we're gonna do this within the terminal. So this new file, you can add and create a new folder within your folder structure. And I just created a brand new folder called my, and then within here, we're gonna create an index page. And within the index page, this is where we're gonna have all of our GitHub pages content. So next up, we wanna add this as a folder within the workspace. So we wanna add the folder into a new workspace. So I'm gonna head and set that as my workspace folder. And then now let's open up the browser window and we're gonna use the live server, which is an add-on within Visual Studio Code that allows us to run files directly online. Now set the HTML content that you wanna use. And I'm gonna do a very basic HTML setup. So we're gonna be setting up the HTML tags. We'll add in some title tags there. And then of course we can update this later on. So we're gonna have a version locally and then that's gonna to update to the GitHub pages and update our GitHub repo once we're ready to go. So go ahead and we'll save that and refresh it. So there's our content for the web page. And now what we wanna do is we want to clone the repository to our computer where we've got the index file. So within the Visual Studio Code, select new terminal. That's gonna open up the terminal there at the bottom. We wanna make sure that we are in the correct directory. You can type ls to see all of the files that are currently within the directory. Or on a Windows machine, you can type dri for directory. And now we wanna make sure that GitHub is installed and that Git, you have Git installed on your machine before you try to use Git. You can go over to git-scm.com forward slash downloads. And from here, you can select the different clients to download if you're downloading to a Mac OS or Windows machine. So right now I am on a Mac machine. So I wanna do download the latest Git for Mac. So you can go through the steps there and just make sure that you do have Git installed. And in order to check, you can always check the version that you're currently running. So right now I'm on the latest version, which at the time of recording is 2.33. So make sure that you do have Git installed before trying to do a Git command. And then once you are sure that you do have Git installed and you're ready to set up the repository and under the code, there's gonna be the HTTPS link 
And now within the terminal of the editor, let's make a directory and we'll just call it page. So that's going to create a folder called page. And then we're going to change directory into page. And this is where we can use the git clone and then the path to where the repository is in order to clone it. So right now it's going to be cloning it to our web page and it's moved the folder to the web page. And there's our folder that we just created called page. And that's the readme file that we have from the GitHub repository. So we've got the repository all connected up on our local machine. Let's take a look and see what folders we have within the directory. So we have the my pages directory, which contains the readme file. So we'll just update this and we're just going to add a one to it and now move into the change the directory into the my pages. So this is going to be where we can access the git and we can type the git status. So we've got the branches up to date, origin master. We see that we did modify the readme file. Let me just clear this once again. So now we've updated and we've modified the readme file. So we want to add the and update. So using git add, let's go ahead and we're going to add and update all. So it's going to update everything, check our git status. Let's go ahead and we're going to commit the file and just uh, type in updated here. So that's going to insert the file and it's going to allow us the git repository. So let's go ahead and we'll do that. So do a git push. And now when we go over to our GitHub repository, let's check out what we have for the readme. So we've got the update. So everything is in sync with what we have online. So what we want to do is we want to add the index page into the my pages. We want to make a copy of that. So you can simply drag it and drop it into the my pages. And we can do a git status. And right now that we've added in the index page. So do the same thing where we do a git add. And we can specify that we're adding the index.html. And then once again, the git status, just to make sure that we're okay to make the commit and then do the git commit dash M index setup. And then we can push the changes. So that's a git push to push the changes to the GitHub repository. And now let's see what we've got here. So we've got the index file so that we're ready to launch our Git pages. So now in the GitHub, when you're logged into the GitHub account under settings, and this is where you can set the page for set up your Git pages. So under the pages, deploy from a branch. And then we need to select the branch that we're using. So right now we're using the master branch and then just save that and give it a few minutes and then refresh it. And then you should be able to see that your site is live using the My Pages. So now you can select that and visit the web page. So now we can make some updates to it and we'll just type Git Pages Welcome. So it's going to be our new content. Let's upload it and we'll push it from our local. So first thing we want to do is add the index file or we could just add all of the changed files. We want to use the Git commit and we'll call it update two and then git push to push the changes and then we can clear the terminal. And we can go back to our GitHub under the my pages here and we can see we've got the changes there to GitHub. And then let's go over to our GitHub page. And then it does take sometimes a minute or two to update. And once you see that this updates when it was last deployed, you can now do a refresh and you can see the changes take place directly within your web URL on GitHub pages. So that's how you can set up Git pages and commit to it from your local repository. So go ahead and try it out for yourself.